Welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the multiplication rule and I will make a separate video for conditional probability. All right, so for the multiplication rule, the first thing you need to we need to talk about is defining the term independent events. All right, now that term is extremely important as it will affect what we do. So independent events, the mathematical definition is if event A does not affect the probability of event B occurring, the two events are independent. Give a couple of examples. Uh, if we're rolling a dice and we roll once and get a six, and then we roll again and get a four, those two events are independent. Just because we got a six once doesn't mean we are more or less likely to get a four. All right, the second is drawing cards from a deck. All right, so if we draw a card from a deck and then we replace it, the deck still has 52 cards in it. So when we draw the next one, the probability is not affected. All right, let's scroll up. If we have independent events, the probability of A, and the keyword is and, the key... All right, probability of A and B occurring is the probability of A times the probability of B. All right, let's do a quick example. A coin is flipped and a die is rolled. Find the probability of getting a four and a head. All right, so the probability of getting a four and head, all right, is going to be equal to, right, probability of getting a four when the die is rolled is one out of six because we're using a standard die. The probability of getting a head is one out of two because it's either head or tail. And we see that when we multiply these two together, we get one twelfth. Now this is a great way to do it. Um, it certainly doesn't take that much time, but we can also use what we call sample space. So if we say the sample space for a um, coin being flipped is either head or tail, the sample space for a die being rolled is one, two, three, four, five, or six, we can see that all the possible uh, combinations of these, we would have a head and a one, a head and a two, a head and a three, a head four, a head and a five, a head and a six, or we could have a tail and a one, a tail and a two, a tail and a three, a tail and a four, a tail and a five, a tail and a six. And what we see is that this sample space is 12 long because we have six with the head and six with the tail. The probability of getting a head and a four is just one of the units out of the 12. Hence again, one twelfth. Once again, just another way to um, represent the data. All right, let's try another one. A card is drawn and then replaced, and then a second card is drawn. Find the probability of getting a queen and an ace. Now, the first thing is, is that we see uh, some keywords here and replaced. All right. That tells me that these are two independent events because we are drawing a card out, out of a 52 card deck. And then on the second draw, we're still drawing a card out of a 52 card deck. So the probability of getting a queen and an ace is going to be the probability of getting a queen times the probability of getting an ace, right? The probability there's four queens in a deck out of a total of 50, not 54, excuse me, 52 cards. Probability of getting an ace is four out of of again 52 so when we multiply those together I got 16 over 2704 and when I simplify that 
that, I get one out of 169. So the probability of drawing a queen, then replacing it, and then drawing an ace is one out of 169. All right, let's try another one. The bucket contains three red balls, two blue balls, and five white balls. A ball is selected, its color is noted, and then replaced. Again, we're doing it with replacement. A second ball is then selected, its color noted. Find the probability of the following. All right, so we need to do selecting two blue balls. So the first is we're doing the probability of blue and blue. So that equals, so how many blue balls do we have? We have two out of a total of how many balls? Let's see, so I got three plus two is five, plus five is 10, two out of 10. And then it is replaced, which means we still have 10 balls and there's still two blue balls in there. So it's two times two is four out of 100. And we can simplify that to one out of 25. All right. The next we have selecting a blue ball, then a white ball. So because this is independent, I can do the probability of blue. The keyword is and, right? So a blue ball, then a white ball. Um, and I'm going to multiply that times the probability of white. So that's going to equal... Again, probability of a blue ball we learned from part A was 2 out of 10. And I'm going to multiply that times 5 out of 10, if I can write a 10, which equals 10 out of 100 or 1 tenth. All right, selecting a red ball, then a blue ball. So we need the probability of red times the probability of blue because again we are with replacement let's look back at our problem and what we see is is that how many red balls do we have uh, three red balls all right and that's out of a total of 10 so i have three out of 10 and we know from part a probability of a blue ball is two out of 10 and when we multiply these together we get six out of 100 and that simplifies to 3 over 50. You can either do probability as fractions or decimals. Um, I personally do fractions, but if your teacher does decimals, you are welcome to convert. All right. So, last problem that we're going to do. A Harris poll found that 46% of... Americans suffer from stress once a week. If three people are selected at random, find the probability that all three will suffer stress once a week. So we need the probability of stress and stress and stress. So three people getting stressed. So that's, so remember our probability now in the problem is in the form of a percent. We need to convert it to a decimal. So that's 0 0.46 times 0 0.46 times 0 0.46. And what we note is that when we multiply these together, I get 0 0.097. So that's a probability that if we draw three people at random, that all three will be suffering stress. All right, so... This is a quick note on the multiplication rule for independent events. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you um, on the back end. Thank you.